Okay, you guys, welcome to my chicken coop. I need to refill their water, and I also need to clean out the actual water tank. They're, they're going to be making a lot of noise because anytime they see me or my son, we are always giving them treats. So I think at this point, the chickens, they just see us as like a big walking treat because they get spoiled every single day. So that's why they're making a whole bunch of noise. But we recently got, we recently got a new rooster and he is a Sarama rooster, which I believe is the smallest breed of chicken that exists. Um, someone might correct me on that. First things first, I'm going to get their water refilled. Now that we have the uh, six chickens and all, their water has to be refilled like every day, every other day. They're going through it much, much quicker. So I have to clean out their water thing. But what I wanted to ask you guys is if you had any solutions to preventing algae from building up on the inside of like a plastic wa chicken water container, I read online that it's because of the exposure to light which creates the algae situation and that it doesn't hurt the chickens. But for me, I just, I wanna come up with a way to prevent this from happening in general. But I'm gonna put some vinegar in there to hopefully reduce the opportunity for algae to grow. And I do know that vinegar is good for, you know, chickens diets and everything anyways. Don't worry, this is not a, scrub brush that we would, we would be using inside like for our dishes. This is like exclusively something I would just use for the chickens. Okay, so that's washed and before I touch the vinegar bottle, I'm gonna wash my hands. So typically when I add vinegar to their water, it's apple cider vinegar, but I'm just out of apple cider vinegar. But I figure, you know, that it's anything is better than nothing. So really you're just kind of adding like a few tablespoons just to kind of help with the bacteria and their gut health. Nothing, like literally just like one tablespoon. So that's clean with some vinegar. Oh my gosh, I cannot get this on. We're good to go. So our new rooster, his name is Spiky Man and he was named after uh, my son named him. My mom raised him from a chick. So we're always like, I don't even know what it is. It's like we're um, ping ponging chickens back and forth. Like I will raise some chickens, give her some. She will raise some chickens and give me some. But this particular flock, I'm hoping to have for the long haul. The last flock that I raised, I ended up giving basically all of them to my mom. Uh, it was just a lot going on. I had just had a baby, all that type of stuff. But right now I'm out of the like baby craziness and um, I feel prepared emotionally, you know, to have chickens and uh, more responsibility around the property. What I wanna do before allowing these guys to free range is I want to build like a chicken tractor uh, or like one of those, I think that's what they call it. Like, so it's like a mobile chicken coop basically. And I want it to be wide enough where it fits in our raised beds that are four feet wide. So I want it to like slide inside of those. That way every once in a while we can put it on top of those beds and they can um, like eat through in between seasons, all of the weeds and things like that. And kind of like do a natural, of course like permaculture all, all the systems working together type of relationship so the reason why we don't let these chickens free range all the time the only time we let them out is when we know that we're gonna be outside for a few hours and we can watch them is because unfortunately um, we have a lot of predators in the area so we'll have we have like a whole coyote pack that lives in like that kind of abyss back there. And we have tons and tons of hawks that, or I'm, I say tons and tons, but enough hawks that it's a problem. And also uh, we at least have like one or two owls that I know of that live like literally in our particular property. The owls aren't as much of a property as the hawks because uh, 
the chickens are usually asleep by the time the owls are coming out and doing their thing. But that is why we just simply cannot let them free range. It's too much of an investment for us right now to just constantly be losing chickens. And it's not fair to them. We don't want to lose these chickens. They are important to us. They're like our pets and our, you know, our children get attached to them as well. So that's kind of why they're all cooped up right now. But going into the new year, I definitely have plans to build one of those chicken tractors. I will definitely make a video on it, of course. I just can't do it now because there's just so much going on in the month of December. Now I'm headed out to the garden. I've got some things I need to get done as per usual, you know. It's it's a never ending story out there, which is fine. You know, I'm happy to be out here getting some weeds pulled and some plants pruned. So as of recently, I made what I think to be the perfect loaf of sourdough bread. And the reason why I bring this up is because I have truly been attempting to make a loaf this good for, uh, let's see, Gosh, I started baking sourdough bread when I was pregnant, so it's been at least a year of attempting to make like a loaf of this standard. And I'm like, I'm not embarrassed to say that it has taken me this long to figure out, kind of figure out the process, but um, you know, it's it shouldn't have taken me this long to figure it out. But I know that I'm not the only person in this situation who just struggles so much with sourdough bread baking and i just wonder why is it so complicated because it actually is so easy so i definitely plan to make some videos on mainly focusing on mainly all the things i have failed at because now that i'm starting to understand i'm thinking I want to help other people not struggle for as long as I had struggled with the sourdough bread. All right, I've been looking for my gloves for a really long time and now I see them. They are right here where I left them the last time I was talking to you guys. So anyways, I hate the idea of people giving up on something that's so beneficial for their health, which is sourdough bread. And I have heard uh, so many stories about people who are just amazed, like, oh my gosh, um, I could never get it to work. I could never get started to work and uh, just things like that. And it's something that can be complicated, yes, but it is so worth sticking it out and not giving up on, especially when you're thinking about what this bread is doing for your gut health and it's got so many beneficial things to, it's worth the investment of time. That's why I feel passionately, very passionately, about the idea of making more content surrounded by sourdough because now that I'm starting to understand how to make more perfect loaves, I'm knowing, I'm realizing that there are so many pieces of advice that I didn't receive that could have made this journey so much quicker to feeling like, oh, I'm actually making like decent bread. I'm gonna pull some weeds while we chit chat. So the loaf that I made the other day was really impactful to me because it has been something that I have tried so many times and failed at so many times. And I feel like I've just held my head up and just kept going because that's kind of the type of person I am. I don't get discouraged easily. I would definitely say that is like in one of my probably more positive attributes that I definitely don't get discouraged easily. If anything, when things aren't working out, I become more obsessive about it. So I would describe myself as someone who is not a perfectionist at all. I'm certainly not a perfectionist, but I am obsessive, I will say. So when there's a new skill that I'm trying to hone in on and learn, I become very obsessive about that skill which first started with gardening. Gardening was definitely the first time I was actually struck myself with how obsessed I could get I could get with certain things. And I just 
when I have my mind on something that I want to start to learn, I cannot get it out of my mind and I cannot let it go. I'm like a dog with a bone. So that has been, you know, gardening has steeped into my life in a way that is so second nature at this point. But the initial love, um, I would say relationship with gardening was definitely like a whirlwind romance. I was just looking up, so like, how do you grow a carrot? How do you grow onions? How do you grow tomatoes? Oh, oh my gosh, can we grow a cinnamon tree? Can we grow, you know, cacao? Can we grow these things? And I was just trying to, my mind was trying to process how do all of these things work? And I wanted just to know about everything. So that is, brings me to sourdough where I started to get to a place where I was wanting to know how to make sourdough bread. I felt like it really went hand in hand with the homesteading life and there's obviously a reason why the people in this culture feel so passionately about this because it is such a beneficial thing to incorporate into your life. And people who are homesteaders generally really care about their health. I mean, that's the biggest reason why I'm sure most people get into this lifestyle. So if all those people generally consent, the general consensus is this is positive, then in my mind, I'm thinking I need this in my life and I need this in my family's life. So the first loaves of bread that I made, I was pregnant with my daughter Camille. So it must have been around last November, October. And I remember making the loaf and then trying to score it. I didn't know that you were supposed to like put it in the refrigerator if you wanted to do like all these fancy scores and things like that. I tried to score it and I couldn't even like get my knife through or uh, whatever I was using the blade through the actual loaf. And then looking up all of these people's pictures and thinking how the heck are you guys doing these fancy things? You guys must be like literal magicians with your hands. Like I just was so mesmerized at the idea of like how on earth people could do, make a loaf, let alone like a really pretty one. And then I just kept diving deeper and deeper. Oh, okay, now you have to refrigerate it. Okay, so I've got that part covered. And then, then I would say for months, it was like a battle of literally never knowing when I was gonna over ferment uh, or over proof the dough. It was always over fermented, it was always over proofed. And then I finally figured that out. And now, once I figured that out, I was like, why is it this working like it should? Like these loaves are decent, but they're not working like they should. And then I finally figured out over time that I was using the wrong flour. So this is like the information that I want to show people so that they hopefully don't spend a year, you know, working on this. And uh, this last loaf of bread has been literally, it's so impactful. Like before uh, I went to bed that night, I just knew that it was going to be like a good loaf. Like I knew it was going to be magic. And I know that to me, I know it sounds crazy to be like so invested in bread making but I was like almost giddy to know that the next morning I was gonna pop that thing out and it might be the loaf that I've always dreamed of so I took it out of its um, basket thing it's a it was a batard nice loaf and uh, it was just this jelly pillow that I've always uh, always hoped to get so I feel like finally I can really start diving in on making content with that and I'll include the loaf here because I'm really glad I actually filmed it. So today was the first time I ever sent my son to school with, because he does like a little uh, preschool. The first time I ever sent him to school with homemade sourdough bread for his like school lunch because it was the first time I ever felt like this is like acceptable enough for like a three-year-old to be able to eat, you know, because it's not like the easiest bread for um, a little kid to eat. But anyways, it was soft enough. It was easy enough that I felt like, oh, okay, I can send this to him 
and it for me as a mom feeling like I'm really giving him like such a well-balanced meal that starts with like the bread and it helps with his gut health and all these different types of things. It was a really impactful moment for me to finally feel like I've made it and now I can just keep making this better and continuing to give the kids the best, you know, moving forward. And my daughter, she's only, she's almost nine months old and now I give her sourdough bread every day too. And I just think that what what a treasure that is for children to start out this young eating food like that. Like what is that gonna do for their health over all of these years? So it's just, I don't know. It's really cool to finally be here in this whole homesteading journey, I would say. Healthiest snacks on earth are the ones that come right from the vine and into your mouth within like seconds. I know I just made a video talking all about my snow peas and everything like that, but it is just such an awesome feeling to get out here and just have like unlimited snacks basically when we're out in the garden. And I also wanted to show you guys some updates on my sunflowers back there. They're starting to bloom. And you know what? The really interesting thing is, um, oh, oh my gosh, there's like a huge bumblebee on here. I gotta show you guys. What a stunning little creature. We've got the honeybees with the, the bump. I don't know what kind of bee that is. It's some type of, I know it's not, like, I don't think we have carpenter bees down here. They're just so happy here right now in the garden because the sunflowers are just, they're going crazy. But for real, somebody please let me know what kind of bee that is because it is gigantic. So in January, we plan to get our big um, thing of compost that we typically get. It's from a mushroom farm and we get 20 yards at a time. So that's definitely, our garden could use it all at any given time, but we usually end up spreading about like 10 to 15 yards when we do like our whole garden reset and then holding on to a few yards like through the season. And I'm gonna do a big like cardboard project as well uh, because we utilize that and mulch a lot so that we do the whole like no dig no till garden method so we're going to be doing that in january to prepare for the spring which is crazy and uh, pretty soon i'm going to start thinking of the seeds that we're going to be starting in the spring i'm going to start planting all that out i like to get my seeds started in february and start kind of diving into that that's just kind of what works here in our climate um, because sometimes in March, we're like good to go uh, to start growing things. So if anybody has any good suggestions on tomatoes and peppers and things like that that they really enjoyed growing last year, definitely drop a comment. I've got to know because I want this to be just like every year. I want it to be the best garden yet. And I plan to get more organized with my tomatoes this year than I was last year. Last year we definitely had like 50 tomato plants and they were all doing wonderfully, but it was not very organized. So this year I want my tomato plants to be really organized and like a specific area that would make harvesting much easier and I could have like a better system with that. We started making our own tomato sauce last year and that lasted us a few months and now that i've seen how easy it is to make tomato sauce um i'm never going back i'm always going to have our own tomato products and i know that we can do it or we can grow a whole year's worth of tomato products in one like spring time and it's so good like if you don't if you haven't made your own tomato sauce and you're kind of like intimidated by it I was really intimidated by it as well. Very intimidated and now I realize that's like the one canning thing you really don't need to worry about and for us it's like we use that the most out of anything like canning product wise and every time I would open up like a can my husband would go like oh is this our tomato sauce and I'd be like yep it's our tomato sauce and he's like oh I can tell it's so good so it's it never gets old for us at least now in our homesteading journey we just cherish all these little things and i feel like food should be cherished and food should be celebrated it shouldn't just be some convenience that you're eating 
knowing where your food comes from and having these meals that are actually doing something beneficial for you and your energy, your mind and your spirit is so important. So that's a big reason why we were doing this and we're elaborating on it every year because it gives back to us much more than our physical health. It gives back to us in a way emotionally and mentally and for our kids too. someone's I don't know if you guys can hear that someone's donkeys like doing their thing uh, we have a little ladybug on our eggplant that's always a very good sign I love seeing the ladybugs in the garden they actually eat aphids and other plants so they're kind of like a natural pest control so if you see a ladybug in the garden know that's actually a really good thing and your garden is really healthy and doing its job so I just love seeing that. I'm getting all these weeds pulled. I feel like this eggplant has kind of like taken over, like this is its bed and it's not willing to share with anything because I've tried to grow other stuff in here and it just hasn't uh, worked out, which is fine. But going into the spring season, I want to just expand more like rows for uh, like crop purposes, like, um, like spinaches and tomatoes and things like that and then for the beds inside of the actual like raised bed area I want it to be the crops that like eggplant peppers that can actually last a few seasons which if you're new to gardening uh, eggplants and peppers those are not necessarily just like a one season type crop you can make them last at least two seasons I would think so that is my hope to continue to have these growing through the spring that way we're just ready to go because the one thing about eggplant is that those plants actually take a really long time from seed to harvest and they like really really hot temperatures too so that's why I'm trying to keep these going so that we can just be back in business as soon as the spring rolls around and going into the spring I'm trying to do a bigger pepper garden as well I want to start growing more like paprika and things like that that we actually use a lot and you know dehydrate them and dry them and just start looking at my spice cabinet and thinking like what do I cook a lot with what do we eat a lot of and growing those things in a practicality way instead of just growing like really crazy things which I always am going to want to do that um, but yeah if anybody has any suggestions on other things like that too um, definitely drop a comment because some of these things it doesn't always occur to you that you can grow these things in your backyard and you know like oregano and parsley and dry them out and have them in your own little container too so I'm just trying to take steps every season to start taking over the pantry and the kitchen as much as possible have the garden take over those areas instead of the grocery store so how's everybody doing when it comes to their holiday preparations because I'm just giving you guys a gentle reminder by the time this comes out it'll probably be less than three weeks until Christmas is here you guys so start thinking about what you got to get done I told myself this year I'm not gonna be that last minute mommy I want to be really prepared so I can actually enjoy myself because I feel like at least I mean I'm just speaking for myself I put a lot of pressure on myself every holiday without kids okay so adding children to the mix I feel like this extra sense of responsibility to make things like special and magical so this year I really want to figure out like ways to make things special and magical without um, added detriment to myself and not enjoy the holidays basically I'm here with my broccoli patch doing some weeding so I figure the best way to do that is just plan you know plan ahead and make sure that if there's a special dinner or something like that that we're gonna do or holiday tradition like have it already planned ahead I've already purchased most of the gifts that we're purchasing or giving for people I just haven't got my kids gifts yet so that'll be next in line and uh, yeah I'm just trying to you know make sure that we can really kind of maybe take the holidays slow and just like take it all in for once I'm like constantly switching up beds on you guys right now 
this one needs a lot of work. Actually, last night I came out here before dinner, picked off, just like clipped off a whole bunch of these little like shooting broccoli heads. I put a little bit of oil on them with some salt, tossed them in the air fryer for about like five minutes and oh, so good. It was so perfect. Like the leaves were like nice and crispy and crunchy. So that was super cool. But back to the holidays, this year I totally feel like a sense of responsibility to make things like special, which I feel like I'm already starting to overwhelm myself because of that. But I just want it to be, you know, where my son is like, oh, every year, you know, mom would do this or whatever. My daughter's too young right now to, I mean, she won't know if it's a Monday or Christmas. She's not gonna know anything. But it's his first year you know, really knowing what Santa is and Christmas and all those different types of things. So I feel like we've got to do traditions and things. So I know we're definitely going to make Christmas cookies together the night before Christmas and leave out like cookies for Santa and leave out um, carrots for the reindeers and all that. And we, our family is okay with our children believing in Santa. That's I know there's like a little bit of a controversy on that sometimes. Me personally, as a kid, I didn't have any like trust issues with my parents because of um, believing in Santa for a few years. So we're gonna do the same thing with our kids and keep them as innocent and uh, full of mystic wonder as possible for as long as possible. That's kind of what my goal is. If anybody has any good suggestions on like Christmas traditions that really stuck out to them or that their kids enjoy and uh, that just was impactful on them, definitely drop a comment because I'm, you know, we're a young family and we're trying to like gather what our Christmases are gonna look like, you know, every year. We're in the process of that. Growing up, my mom would always make uh, lasagna on Christmas Eve and she would put spinach in the lasagna like a traditional lasagna but then also add spinach to it and that was like our Christmas lasagna because it had the greenery in it and the red and everything and for me I just feel like that's normal to have lasagna on Christmas Eve so that's a tradition I'd like to continue to do and one thing our family actually has always done probably because my mom did this was whenever we would decorate the Christmas tree she would um, do a big thing of uh, um, fondue. So we would always do fondue with like different dips and things like that while we're decorating the Christmas tree because it's a more sensible meal to kind of come and eat fondue and then put an ornament on the tree and then come back and eat some more fondue. So that's um, a tradition that we have also started to you know, adopt in our house. Pretty much everything I've I've come to, I'm gonna do like the little like Santa feet on the ground Christmas morning with flour to make it look like Santa was here. So if anybody has any more ideas to make things special and magical for little kids, I would love to hear it because we're trying to just soak it all in. I know that these years are so limited when the kids just are at this like, play, in this place of wonder every one of these years while my kids are this little i'm not taking it for granted and i'm really trying to take that in and know that you know one day they're going to be older teenagers and it's just not going to have the same impact so my daughter just woke up i'm going to have to go inside and you know tend to her and everything thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today it made this whole gardening and chicken chores experience so much more enjoyable and if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more i so appreciate everybody who watches this video and supports my channel again my name is shelby and until next time bye